Let's pray. Our precious Father, we thank you tonight in Jesus' name that we as the people of God can be in a place, Father, of ex expression and expectation. Expectation, expression. Expression, expectation. Father, because as we seek and we find, that is the place that we dwell in. Thank you for the prophetic. Thank you for the prophetic by the Spirit of God, that it's the Holy Spirit that infuses inner strength on the inside of us, who encourages us to speak the words of God. And I give you praise this evening, Father. It's by Jesus when he walked the earth that we could learn what it is to walk this earth in the spirit of Christ. We will give you all the praise, glory, honor, adoration, because it's only due to your name, always and ever. Holy Spirit, tonight's going to be no exception. I thank you that you have a word for your people, even those who have been waiting, and they've been waiting patiently. Tonight, they will receive from the Spirit of God what you have for them. In Jesus' name, we all said amen and amen. Now, we're going to go right in, and we actually, like they, they say in the old adage goes, we're going to go right in with a bang. And in Acts chapter 2, now we, we said this morning, and we spoke about the fact that they were all together in one place. They were in the upper room. They were gathered together. They were of one mind. And they were waiting on the promised outpouring of the Holy Spirit, which Jesus promised them. We said this morning, and this again is basically like a link up to what we said, is that when you have a link up between what the Spirit said in the one service and it goes across into the other, it is really to get, uh, I believe it's that continuance and to make the loop within your own spirit and mind to hear what the Spirit of God was saying to you this morning and what he is saying to you tonight. Now, us celebrating Pentecost, Pente means five or then 50 in our case, which is the, as we said, the seventh Sunday after Passover, 50 days afterwards. Now, in Acts chapter two, listen to what is being said now by Peter after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in Acts, and these two scriptures are important to remember, Acts 1, 8 and chapter two, verse four. Now watch verse 17 of Acts 2, and it shall come to pass, and this is for some of you tonight, and it shall come to pass in the last days, God declares, that I will pour out of my spirit upon all mankind, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Now, I want you to see here, and I've spoken about this before, what the word prophesy here means. There are many misconceptions about the word prophecy. Here is what the scripture says and what it explains it is in the Greek text. It is telling forth the divine counsels and your young men shall see visions. So what is this prophesying here? It is speaking forth the divine counsels of God. This is not necessarily in this sense predicting the future. So there is the difference between the two. So telling forth the divine counsels and your young men shall see visions, divinely granted appearances, and your old men shall dream dreams, divinely suggested dreams. I want you to see how the Holy Spirit is involved in every aspect of this outpouring. Because, listen to this, because it's his outpouring of himself, it's his function in every situation. All right, because it's the outpouring of himself, the Holy Spirit, into the plantations of the Lord. It is the function on he, of him in every one of those situations. Your old men shall dream dreams, divinely suggested ones. Yes, and on my men servants also, and on my maid servants, in those days I will pour out of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Telling forth the divine counsels. Ah, oh, but look at the word. It's different in the Greek here. Telling forth the divine counsels and predicting future events pertaining especially to God's kingdom. And the reason why I wanted to read that tonight and why the Holy Spirit laid that upon my heart is so that you can see what we've been saying over all this period of time with the prophetic is that there is a place for prophesying, which is the, the divine counsels of God from the word of God. It is where the, the, 
the Logos word becomes the Rhema word because it's spoken forth from hearts of faith by the Holy Spirit. Then there is the predicting of future events where God will many times, and it's happened and you've seen it on Sunday evenings, where there is the speaking forth of God's divine counsels, but then there is also the predicting of future events, which has happened on this broadcast on Sunday nights. Then he says, and I will show you wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth beneath, blood and fire and smoking vapor. And we know that these things are really in the process of happening around the globe right now. We are seeing, and people are talking about it all across the globe, and people are sending these things on social media as well, where you are seeing these strange occurrences and things happening across the globe. It is in the sky, especially, of course, it is in the oceans. There are many things that are happening now, and all of these things were prophesied. Now, the Spirit of God explicitly shared with me some things that I need to share with you now tonight. And this is what, and there's one thing that was very specific that he brought out, and it's for the single people tonight. If you are single tonight, you're not married, and you are online, I want you to especially listen very, very carefully and pay close attention to what the Holy Spirit is going to say because he has a word for you. He wants to encourage you tonight. That will be for a little bit later. But this is what the Lord said as well. Remember, they were in the upper room, these disciples, when the outpouring of the Spirit happened. When they were in that place where they were all, the Bible says they were of one mind. That is the precursor to revival. What does that mean? That in order for the church to see the revival that we are praying for, we need to be of the same spirit of one mind concerning the things of God. You have heard me talk about this on numerous occasions where I said, let us really forget those petty little differences that exist between us. The little things that are of non-significance, they are non-events, they have no importance whatsoever when it comes to the eternal picture. <laughs> Amen. So it's very important tonight that we understand that. That in the economy of the kingdom of God, it is the operating together as the body of Christ in all aspects. And guys, you can see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, you will find that in that portion of scripture, the Holy Spirit is the one who in five different places says that all things that are going to be happening when the outpouring of the Spirit is there in the giving of the gifts, it's going to be by the Spirit of God. It is not by man's will. It is not something you can switch on and off. So with that, I want to say with all the gifts that we have in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, you do not possess any of those. You only operate in them. Because I've heard many people saying, especially in the days we are in now, I've heard many people say, well, I have the gift of healing. I have the gift of prophecy. I have the gift of working of miracles. No, you do not have that gift. It is something is that the Holy Spirit operates in and through those gifts in each and every believer's life when the unction or the power of the Holy Spirit comes on you to either prophesy or pray for somebody for healing or then for a, a notable miracle to take place. All right, so this is what the Spirit of God said to me for this evening, that there must be an expectation before there can be an expression. I love it when the Holy Spirit plays with words when it comes to the things that he wants to say, <laughs> because that's what I love. I love the words that he articulately puts together uh, for us to, 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 to catch, if I want to say then, the, 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 the drift of the kingdom of God and what it is that the kingdom is saying to us. So here is the thing. What is the measure of your expectation in the days we are in now to do the things that God had called the body of Christ to do? How big is your expectation? So here is the challenge thing to you tonight, because this is what he spoke about to me. He said, I want my people to have a greater expectation so that you're this, so that there can be a greater expression of the kingdom. So the measure by which your expectation 
comes before God in wanting to do things for the kingdom, it is to that measure that there's going to be an expression of the things that God had called you to do. Now, remember I said that there's going to be a word for those who are single. If you are not married, perhaps you are divorced, uh, maybe never been married. Um, the Spirit of God said to me, I need to encourage you this evening by the Spirit to say to you, there are those who have given you the understanding that you will only really be effective in ministry once you have a partner, once you have a husband, or once you have a wife. Because I know in many ministries, they prefer um, they prefer the married couples. They prefer for there to be a married couple to do a specific ministry, to be over a specific department and so forth. But I'm encouraging you tonight by the Spirit of God. He is saying that he is raising you up and you're waiting. Listen to this. Your waiting must not be for a partner in the sense of thinking that you'll be fulfilled when the partner comes in what it is that you've been called to do in ministry because your partner in ministry has already arrived and it's the Lord, <laughs> it's the Lord Jesus himself. Come on now. So that is a word for someone tonight. And the Spirit of God expressly told me that, that you must not be, in fact, I'm going to be very strong about this tonight. And it's, I believe it's by the Spirit of God that stop praying for a partner and thank God for your partner in the Spirit, the Lord Jesus Christ. And what, what, what does he mean by that? That he will, watch, lead you, guide you, instruct you, teach you in the way that you should go. So that, whoo, glory, you are going to find fulfillment in the feature of Jesus in your life in working towards the ministry and the capacity of ministry that he's called you to there's going to be such fulfillment that the partner will come at the right time but it's not going to be a partner that will um, be one to, bo to boost you in the sense of ministry it will just be somebody that will flow into what you are already doing Woo, glory that is a good word for the single people tonight. Because unfortunately, guys, and it is true, unfortunately, sometimes in ministry, the single people are marginalized because they, you know, and I know, and perhaps, you know, I could be stepping on some toes tonight, but that's okay because we'll pray for those toes afterwards. But there are just those ministries that, that they prefer just to have the married couple. They feel it's more stability. Listen, Paul wasn't married. <laughs> so I just thought, <laughs> I thought I'll, I'll throw that one in there. Paul, the apostle, wasn't married, yet he could talk about marriage. He spoke about marriage in the letter to the Corinthians, and he laid out so many things concerning marriage. So, so tonight, that is an encouraging word for you. And here is the thing. The level of your expectation is going to determine the level of the expression of what God has given you and then something he told me um, about the outflow of that is going to be exploitations in his name or exploitations for the kingdom. And we're going to be talking about that a little bit later. Then this is what I heard from the Spirit of God. As I was contemplating this thing about the upper room where the disciples were all together and they were all as one in agreement, that the Spirit of God came upon each and every one of them, endowed each and every single one of them with power from on high. And this morning we spoke about the fact that we are not supposed to be pushed around on the landing strip by a pushback tractor or a tug. We are supposed to be in the plane taking off to the in, in the blue skies because of the combustion and fire of the Holy Spirit and the wind of the Spirit under your wings. That's why I needed to put the eagle up tonight. Because that eagle is for somebody tonight. You need to see that picture. Because that's going to be you and you're going to be taking off into the blue skies. Your time of waiting has come to an end. You've been faithful. You've been committed. You've been loyal. You've, you've, you've adapted yourself to the things of God that he called you to do. You've been in the word. You've been hearing the spirit. You've been in prayer. You've been in praise and worship. You've been walking the line with the Lord. And it's going to be the time of your release. And you need to be ready for that. And thou, <coughs> thou shalt not look down on thyself. Stop the self-judgment. Those of you who are so hard on yourselves, thinking that you have no inner capacity to actually fulfill that which God has called you to. 
Yes, courses do help, and I present courses. But it's, it's much more than that. When the Spirit comes in and you enter in, listen. So, oh, thank you, Jesus. This is by the Spirit right now. Some of you are already, you've already enrolled in the school of the Spirit. And I'm not talking about a course from any church. Any church anywhere. It is the school of the Spirit. You've done courses, maybe through me, through other institutions, or whatever the case may be. You've done courses, but you're now in the school of the Spirit. I'm picking it up in the Spirit right now. That <laughs> he, he enrolled you in his school, and he is busy training you and equipping you. Now, what you must remember tonight is from the time of your enrollment to the time of your commissioning, there is a thing called time. All right, so listen again. From the time of your enrollment to the time of your commissioning into what you need to do from your training, there's the thing called time. And this is the school of the spirit. Some of you are going to start writing things down. And you remember we spoke about this possibly about seven weeks ago, seven or eight weeks ago. I spoke about the fact that you need to write things down that the spirit shows you. Guys, what is happening in my life since last week, last week, uh, um, sorry, the week before last is the Thursday morning at three o'clock. I'm sharing this with you because this is the prophetic team. I woke up at three o'clock with a mind that was as clear as looking into bright lights. It's like lights were on in my brain. And I felt the spirit of God start ministering to me. And you know, it's, it's those times that, that you think to yourself, shall I get up and get a pad and just write these things down? Because the spirit started downloading things to me. And all that the Spirit downloaded to me, I started contemplating and I started thinking about scriptures. And I, from the the the, um, the hour of three o'clock till just after four, about ten past four, was just in the presence of God. Now, those of you who know me know that I'm not a <laughs> I'm not a morning person. Well, let me put it this way: I used to be not a morning person. I was not a morning person. Things have changed radically, and there's a shift in the spirit. We've been talking about the shift in the spirit. God is busy changing things, and he has said, basically, son, that's the time that I'm going to give you downloads. Guys, the downloads has been on internal hard drives. I'm not kidding you. It's internal hard drives. Things have changed so dramatically that with the downloads that he's given and me communicating with him and just talking to the Lord, um, then the next morning, it was three o'clock. And it's been the pattern since then. This morning, it was just after four o'clock. So it's like my spirit. The only way I can describe it is that my spirit is so, I, I don't know what to call it, vibrant. It is, it's like vibrating in the things of the spirit with God. And he's, he's pouring things out. And he's saying to me, I want you to look specifically at this son. I want you to specifically look at that, which is what I'm busy doing. I'm only focusing on that now because I can, just like you, I can open the Bible, I can take my notepad, and I can be in seven different places at the same time, being all over the place because it's so fascinating and you get so pulled in. But God is putting us in the school of the Spirit. So I'm saying to you, what has happened to me, maybe some of you are going to witness to this, that it's already started happening. Can I ask you, please, will you WhatsApp me? And say to me, Yuan, it's already started happening. It's already a reality in my own life. I'm in that school of the spirit right now. And school of the spirit, guys, listen, it's not for those who have a certain academic qualification already or standard. Remember I spoke about David earlier on? David was taught by the Lord under thorn bushes in the desert playing stringed instruments. Come on now. It's not going to be in the halls of academia. It's not going to be with the accolades that's on the, on the walls. It's great to have those certificates on the walls. It's not what the Spirit is talking about. It's not the school of the Spirit that he's referring to. He's referring to you. And guys, hear this. When you hear the Spirit of God speak to you the way that he's going, going to do, and some of you maybe already are receiving it, you need to remember 
those things that he's saying. I have found personally the things that he's down, downloading to me. A lot of them are headlines of things that I now have to take care of in the spirit and concerning the things of the word. Open, open heavens, open revelations are busy happening. And I believe those who have been called by God to rise up and lead, even if it's small groups of people, you have a tremendous responsibility on you. Some of you are going to be teaching things that you didn't even know you were capable of teaching. Oh, glory. And then this is what I heard from the spirit. He said, son, tell them there's room in the room. That's the way I got it. There's room in the room. And I think, guys, remember, I also, when he gives things, I also have to try and figure out what the Spirit is saying, uh, just like this one now, because I did ask him, Lord, what do you mean by that? Room in the room. And I was thinking about the upper room when they ascended the stairs to go into the upper room to receive the downpour of the Holy Spirit, the outpouring. And again, I believe, and guys, listen, that's why we are a team on a Sunday night. I know some of you, and I'm seeing some people online tonight that I haven't seen for a while. It's great to have you on board with us. God bless you. But I do believe it's for those who have felt that the karma is for us, Ninja Plakni. That it's for those who have already entered. It's really um, exclus exclusively for them. And the Lord said, that is a lie. There's room in the room. Will you enter in? And you know what the qualification is for you to enter in? To come as you are. Don't try. Guys, guys listen. And, and I believe the Spirit of God is speaking to people tonight. Don't come in to try and fit in with what the atmosphere in the room is. It's you and him. When you connect to him, you'll find that what, he, what he's going to pour out on you is going to be the roll out of what they have already received, but you're going to be one of the ones receiving that as well. It's going to be no different. You see, when you'll see in the picture that I sent out with what I uh, send out on social media for advertising the, 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 the prophetic service tonight or announcing it, the broadcast of the prophetic service. Tongues of fire, the Bible says, sat upon each and every one of them. You see then what we do. The yens of flamiki was not greater as the other yens. Have you ever thought about that? The one's flame wasn't bigger than the other one. So that afterwards, Peter could say to, to Simon, uh, and to John, and to, to, to Stephen, to say to one of those disciples, listen, here is, here, is the, here is the thing that my, my flame is a little bit bigger than, than your guys' flame. You know, so you guys need to heed what the Spirit is saying to me. Guys, this is what we must remember, that each and every single one of us have received the same endowment. We have received the same Spirit. And it's by that same Spirit that we will prophesy, that we will do works and exploits in His name. Now, this is what I wrote down by the Spirit. Some thought that the expression bit was for the one who is exclusive. And the Lord now to, tonight took that right out of the door, that that is not the reality. Then this, what does it mean when you have an expectation and there is going to be the exp expression of the Spirit of God through you into the hearts and lives of others? Exploits, listen, God wants you to do mighty deeds that bear witness to the reality of who he is in you. I'm going to say that slowly because you take notes on a Sunday night. God wants you to do mighty deeds that bear witness to the reality of who he is in you. Can you see who it comes back to? It comes back to Jesus. You'll find that Peter in Acts chapter 2, after he talks about your young men shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and the pouring out of the Spirit, when he goes through all of that, what does he do? Straight after that, he goes back to the authenticity and the mandate that Christ had given them. He goes back to the authenticity of Christ and the true gospel that is going to be preached now through them. 
And he speaks to all those now who have rejected Christ, those who crucified him, those who didn't want to know about him. He now speaks to them and he addresses them. I personally believe, and you've heard me say this, that is one of the greatest, the greatest sermon in the New Testament, apart from what Jesus preached. That one in Acts chapter 2, and you can go and read that yourself. Then listen further. God is raising you up. Those of you who will know him intimately, who will be transformed into his image by beholding him. And you will then demonstrate mighty acts to manifest his power for the glory of his name. If you want to hear that again, you'll have to listen to the recording. You'll have to go on to, on to transformation on YouTube and just go and watch this again and listen to it again. Because this is what the Spirit of God is saying. It is the day, it is the hour, it is the season where those whom God has preserved, he preserved you so that he could release you in the right season at the right time for the right reason in the right direction for the purpose that he has called you for. Some of you have started feeling it. You've started sensing it. Yet it's like a tug on your heart where God is saying, I have been preparing you. Listen to this, guys. We are going to be released in seasons. Just like a team that is on the pitch and they're playing a sport, cricket, uh, well, not really cricket, but rugby and, and soccer, where you have the reserve bench. You have those who come on when uh, uh, 25 minutes to 30 minutes before the end of the game, those players are finished. They'll put those ones off the pitch and they'll bring the ones on who are fresh. That is what I'm seeing in the spirit is going to happen is that we are going to labor in teams so that when those who need a rest and a break are going to take time out, the others are ready to come on and continue with the game. But we all play the same game because it's the same master plan, because it's the same blueprint. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Some of us have been playing hurt. I just hear the Spirit of God saying that right now. Some of us have been playing hurt. Have you seen some of these rugby players? These guys that are six foot five, six foot six, 120, 130 kilograms. I mean, they are running rocks. These guys are ginormous. Muscle from head to toe. And they go onto that pitch. And <laughs> sometimes you want to see where flesh is because it's just bandages and strips. Have you seen these guys? And they run onto that pitch. They've been bandaged up, but they play the game. And the Spirit of God says, some of you have been bandaged up by the Spirit because you've been hurt in life. You've been hurt by people. You've been disappointed by people. You've fallen short of some things. You didn't make the grade in some issues and some instances. And God is saying, I am raising you up because I have qualified you. Yes, you are bandaged up, but you're going to play the game. And because of your spiritual gutsiness, you are going to come through on the other side. And you're even going to score for the team. Because we are a team and we're running this thing together. That's why I love what it says in the book of Acts. Where it talks about the fact that they said when they, when they went into the upper room, when they ascended the stairs, they went in there indefinitely. Linking up with what we said this morning. You see, because sometimes what we do, we become impatient. We put time frames on ourselves and our schedules of the things of the spirit where God says it's indefinite. That means that anything can happen at any time. That's why the expectation of suddenly come when you are in a place where you are there indefinitely. Can I say that again? The suddenly of the spirit come to those who are in a place where they are waiting in the spirit indefinitely. It's not a thing of Lord by such and such a time. I would like for you to speak to me, to tell me what to do. You see spirit presence causes spirit enhancement, spirit enablement and spirit power. But you need to be very, very patient with yourself and the things of God. Step of faith. Spirit of God says there are those of you, you need to take a step of faith now. It's time. 
you've been waiting and the step of faith that you need to take. Consult with those whom you know in the spirit who are more advanced than you, who can stand alongside you, pray with you, back you up, support you, lift you, so that what you are about to do and when you take that step of faith, you've got backing in the spirit, knowing that those who trust God and who believe in you and what God has placed in you will support you to see it through. This is very much the time that you're going to have to turn your back on those who have come down on you. Those who have said that, but you do not have the ability to do that. Uh, those of you who said, but I know, I know where you've come from. I know your history. <laughs> I know your history. I said the same thing to Jesus when he went to Nazareth. We know your history. And I'm paraphrasing. We know your history. We know who you are. You are the son of Mary and Joseph. They stated a fact, but denied the truth. Did we get that? They stated a fact, he was, but they denied the truth. First of all, he was son of God. He was God in the flesh. Yeshua HaMashiach, in living colors, walking amongst his own, and his own did not recognize him or receive him. There are going to be those in your own circle who will not recognize the anointing that God has placed on you. And I want you to take courage from that. That should encourage you even more to rise up in the school of the spirit and be counted for the kingdom. Because you see, you cannot one day look back and say, Lord, the reason I didn't do that is because so and so and so didn't believe in me. You see, when he called you, he already started equipping you to empower you for you to express the kingdom. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let us, John 14, verse 6. Amen. That's the scripture in John 14, 6, that where Jesus was speaking to Philip. And the disciples said, Lord, well, you know, you always talk about the Father. They show us the Father. And Jesus said to, to Philip, he says, Philip, how long have I been with you? And don't you know yet that once you've laid eyes on me, you've laid eyes on the Father. Once you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Matthew 5, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. See who you are and glorify your Father who is in heaven. You are not trying to win favor with men. You are not trying to win favor with people. Because the moment you get the approval of people, next day they can let you down. Listen to this. The vision will never leave you, even when people do. You push through with everything that you have on the inside of you. You stand up, and having done all to stand, you stand. And you move forward. Don't wait for people's approval. When God has already put his seal of approval on you. You've been approved, accepted and acknowledged. In the thing that he's called you to do. That's all you need. Then he comes and he puts the anointing upon you as well. To do the exploits in his name. Amen. Let's just. I feel I need to pray. Especially for the single people tonight. I need to pray for you right now. Are you ready? Single people. There where you are seated, just open your hands to the Lord tonight. Daar waar jy sit in jou huis vanaan, hierdie gebed is vir jou. Our precious Father, I thank you tonight for these beautiful people of God. Father, I thank you for these people who are single where at times they've been looked down upon. Sometimes even criticized. And Father, they've, they've been looked down at even with suspicion. But Father, I thank you that your arms are open to them, not only to receive, but to release. I thank you, Father, that tonight they are going to be encouraged to know that they can not just stand, but having done all to stand, stand, rise up, do what you've called them to do, Father, do exploits in your name. And Father, love those who actually 
disconnected them, to turn around and love them. Father, because that's the spirit that we are of. We are of the spirit of, of, of love and grace. And we thank you that we can love those who have not believed in us in that we can do it. So I pray for you tonight, for the women and the men who are single. And I pray for an endowment of the Spirit of God on you tonight. Right there where you are right now with your arms open before the Lord. Receive it now in Jesus' name. Receive even the anointing that you need to do the works that he has called you to do. There's no distance in prayer. It's as if you are here with me right now and I'm laying hands on you. And there are others praying with you right now, with me praying for you. That in the name of Jesus, because we are a team and we work together in the kingdom, that you will, you will go out, you will rise up, you will stand, and you will not be fearful. I come against all doubts and unbelief and fear in the name of Jesus, and I cast you down. Thank you, Father, that faith arises in their hearts. And by faith, they will stand and do those exploits that we spoke about in this session tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for switching the lights on on the inside of them. That they may see the good works of God in them. I give you praise for that, Father. Oh, I give you praise. Oh, the word promotion just came up in my spirit. God is saying there are people tonight. Tonight, right now, they, they, they where you are seated. And as you are hearing this word, this word, that the Holy Spirit right now is giving you promotion in the things of the Spirit. Just please receive it now. This is your moment. Some of you are receiving promotion in the Spirit. And remember, when it's promotion in the Spirit, it's greater servant leadership. Because whom God promotes is for you to be in a greater servant position in the kingdom of God, to serve the way Jesus did. But what happens as well is there's a measure of authority that's increased. Because those who know what their authority is in Christ, the enemy also knows that you know what your authority is. So, Father, thank you for giving. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I just, I just sense an outpouring tonight on, on the people of God. You are receiving it. Some of you have been alone. You've been on your own. But I want you to know you have not been on your own. You've had a partner with you. And I say that with such respect and honor to my God. But he has partnered with you to lift you up and support you and stand by you and see you through. And anoint you for these days that we are going into right now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I hear in my spirit line upon line, precept upon precept. Some of you are going to be taught line upon line, precept upon precept. It's going to be a little, then it's going to increase, it's going to be more. You're first going to just go in ankle deep, then it's going to be knee deep, then it's going to be waist deep, then you're going to swim. But don't want to swim before you are in the shallow side. You need to take this systematically, spiritually, as the Spirit leads you in. And I know you are receiving this tonight. Always be cautious in the Spirit. Not to want to jump in where the Spirit is showing you to go step by step. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for spiritual increase for your people, Father. Increase in the Spirit. Increase in the Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Is there anybody um, you sense in the Spirit now that God is speaking to you? That there's a word that you have for these precious people online? Uh, maybe there's something. Uh, guys, I just want to make sure that you can do that. Now you can unmute, unmute yourself. By the Spirit, just speak to the people of God, please, if you have a word. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Precious Lord, precious Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Precious Jesus. Thank you, Father. Mm. Don't be in a hurry with us, guys. 
The Spirit of God is still busy speaking to people. Even where you are seated right now, the Holy Spirit is busy ministering to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord gives you ability tonight. The Lord gives you ability tonight. All he needs from you is faithfulness. God imparts ability to those who remain and continue to be faithful. Some people wait until they have the ability instead of just being faithful and just go into it and taking a step of faith and going into the unknown. And then what the spirit of God does is he teaches you the ability in the spirit to do things. Oh, thank you, Lord. School of the spirit, guys. School of the spirit. School of the spirit. If you forget a lot of things that I said tonight, remember that, please. School of the spirit is where you've entered into now. Let the Holy Spirit teach you personally through the word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Ask God to show you your heart. Is what Zan says tonight. Ask God to show you your heart. Ask God to show you your own heart. Because then you know what happens is when he shows you your heart, you know the areas. It's like what he's been doing with me now, like doing a complete 180 degrees in me doing my stuff, usually at night, now early mornings, where I'm getting these literally fresh downloads from heaven. Um, and exactly what she said now. And in my heart, um, areas that that is saying that needs a lift, that needs adjustment, that needs to happen. That's a personal thing. That's why he's your personal savior, guys. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, there's something busy happening, and uh, I, I'm just, I'm just receiving it in the spirit tonight. We just receive it, Lord, in the spirit. We receive it. We receive it, Lord. We receive it in the spirit. We receive it, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for taking back what belongs to your people and giving it back to your people, Father. Giving it back. Giving it back. We receive it, Lord. What has been lost, thank you for returning it, Father, sevenfold into the hearts and lives of God's people. Where the enemy is lied to them, thank you that truth is now multiplied back to God's people. We give you praise for that, Lord. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Uh, renewed energy is what I hear in the spirit now. God is saying renewed energy that many of you are going to receive because you have felt exhausted. Uh, we are in the month of May. We're not even halfway through the year. And I've been ministering to some people and some people have been sharing with me that they are absolutely exhausted. Um, it is a bad thing to kind of think that this is the time of the year and I'm, I'm already so tired. So what people do in their minds is they think I've got so many more months to go because they regu regulate their lives according to the worldly calendar. You should not do that at all. You are not in that calendar. You are only passing by in this world. You are of the kingdom of God. You work on a different calendar. <laughs> you, you need to start thinking differently and you draw your power and energy from the spirit of God. Psalm 1, remember it was last week I said read Psalm 1, there's 1, 2, and 3. Because you are blessed when you are by the waterside and you draw your sustenance from the Spirit of God. This is why you're energy from the uncle. You get it from the Spirit of God. He energizes you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You need to pray for people um, for your work situation. And I believe the Lord wants me to close after that. Your work situation has become very, very, very trying, very testing and very tiring. It really is draining you emotionally and physically. We need to pray for you. Father, we bring all of these people before you who in their work situations are being, some are being exploited actually. And Father, they've been taken advantage of being paid less than what they are doing the work. But because of their heart for you and doing all things as unto the Lord and not unto man, they are working relentlessly, tirelessly, and doing it as if they are working for you, Lord. And we thank you for them tonight. 
and for the effort and work that they put in. But Father, we pray for a change. We pray in Jesus' name that they'll be recognized for the work that they are putting in and be paid accordingly, plus above. And Father, we honor you for bringing a change in the workplace for them. But Father, also for their light to shine in that workplace, that people may know and understand that they are of the kingdom and not of this world. And I give you praise for this tonight in Jesus' name. And we all said, amen and amen. God bless you. I thoroughly enjoyed that with you online tonight. Grab a hold of this. Make it your own. Be encouraged through it. Soar like that eagle. Be in that upper room. Receive what God has for you. There's room in the room and do exploits in his name, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Love you guys. You have an awesome week and we'll spot you next week. For those of you who are going to fast, I'll be communicating with you tomorrow morning. God bless.